Eleni Topoludi had arranged to meet her new Facebook acquaintance Alexander in November 2018. The two had met a week before and were clearly getting along. But something didn't feel quite right when she first met the man. As the night passed, that feeling of apprehension gave way to utter terror. Now, our story today contains the majority of the crucial ingredients that will make you angry. We have hatred, insufferable privilege, and two really unpleasant personalities. In fact, the severity of this case angered the Greek people, sparking fresh initiatives to enact stricter legislation. This is the story of Eleni Topolaudi. We're heading to Europe's southernmost point. Hello and welcome to the lovely country of Greece. What comes to mind when I mention Greece? Perhaps it's the beautiful temples that soar over Athens' cliffs. Perhaps it's their immaculate white homes snuggled by the sea. Maybe it's the great weather the country is known for. Whatever the case may be, Greece is an undeniably beautiful country. From the black sands of Santorini to the laid-back party beaches of Mykonos, almost every corner of the island is beautiful. I wish I could say that was always the case, but given the story's trajectory, I can't. Greek culture has profound roots in human history and has played a significant role in shaping Western civilization. Greece is a popular tourist destination for several reasons. Its location in southern Europe makes it home to some of the continent's best beaches and the country's rich historical heritage. These are dispersed over the numerous islands that make up the country, 226 to be precise. Eleni Topolaudi, a 21-year-old university student, lives on one of the larger islands. Rhodes. She was born on January 15, 1997, in Didymoteiko, Greece, to parents Yanis and Kola Topoludi. Eleni was vivacious and witty. She enjoyed life to the fullest. Her parents lavished their love and attention on her and her younger brother, and she was always one of the room's most noticeable characters. Eleni was also highly intelligent. She was an ambitious young woman who never left a job half-finished and this attitude helped her get some of the highest grades in school. To top it all off, she was a linguistic genius. She was trilingual in Greek, English, and Arabic by the time she turned 18. She was frightened about uprooting herself from the family she loved so much, but the call of freedom was too strong to ignore. After finishing high school, Eleni decided to attend Egon University on the breathtaking island of Rhodes. As a student, Eleni quickly adapted to the island culture which revolved primarily around cosmopolitan attitudes and cocktails. It didn't take long for her to fall in love with the island's easygoing vibe and warm residence, and she soon decided that she wanted to make her permanent home here. She loved her family very much, of course, but she also realized that staying at home wasn't going to bring her happiness. She felt the need to leave home, which is something that many of us can relate to. She made a lot of friends throughout her time as a student on the island, and she was well-liked by everyone she met. Most people were drawn to her because of her captivating grin and goofy manner. When I say attract, I also mean love. Many of the male visitors to the island were drawn to her dark brown hair and intense brown eyes. While Eleni was on Facebook in November of 2018, a 19-year-old Albanian male named Alexander Luca began messaging her. Alexander, who was now residing on the island, presented a kind and welcoming persona in his texts. He was pleasant to her on the surface, complimenting her attractiveness and being generally warm and polite. He also often participated in local marathons to maintain his fitness level. Many of these were to benefit deserving causes, which Eleni found endearing. As a result, the two began to converse and discuss their interests. Eleni also mentioned how much she enjoyed traveling and how much she adored Rhode Island. You've probably guessed where this is headed. After a week of intermittent chatting, the couple decided to go on a date. It was only for dinner at a neighborhood kebab restaurant, which is commonly seen as a sort of fast food in Greece. As a result, the two were eventually scheduled to meet on November 27, 2018. Alexander kindly accepted her offer to pick her up from her apartment. She didn't realize it at the time, but her rendezvous with Alexander would end up costing her a lot more than a nice dinner. It was a typical Tuesday evening in November in Greece, and the weather was nice and lovely. Her meeting with Alexander was set for 10 p.m., and the time was quickly coming. Alexander came to her apartment in a pickup truck on time. He parked a short distance away before entering the complex through the front door. On the surveillance footage, he can be seen walking back and forth in front of her apartment building until their first date begins and she leaves the building. 
Alexander kissed her on the cheek before walking her to his pickup. This truck was nothing spectacular, but Eleni was more startled that they weren't alone. Another man was waiting for them in the third seat, which perplexed Eleni. What kind of person takes a friend on a first date? In any case, he introduced himself as Manoli Kukura. Alexander, I'm sure, perceived this date as much more informal than Eleni did. In any case, she accepted the new situation, and the three of them proceeded to have kebabs. So, a little history. In addition, he had a few run-ins with the law in the past. The majority of these incidents were either theft or serious violence, which were all seemingly resolved by throwing money at the problem. It turned out that the truck Eleni was now in belonged to Manoli's father, and Manoli flaunted his wealth and rank throughout the entire ride with both guys. The man then informed Eleni that his family had a luxurious summer home not far from the restaurant in Lindos. He then advised that instead of eating at a fast food restaurant, they get their food and then go to the summer house. The request sounded a little bold for a first meeting, but Manoli was a persuasive man and Alexander looked to be up for it as well. Eleni grudgingly agreed to the new plan, but she wasn't sure what had happened on her date with Alexander. It appeared to have completely derailed. Eleni contacted one of her friends to ask her to call her in an hour after picking up their dinner and making their way to the summer house. She was clearly dissatisfied with the predicament she found herself in. She needed to find a reason to avoid appearing impolite. The best she could come up with was to plan an exit for a friend, reasoning that if the men knew that someone else knew where she was, they wouldn't try anything sexual. An hour later, though, Eleni's buddy called her cell phone and got voicemail instead of an answer. This was out of the ordinary. Maybe the battery on her phone died, or she simply decided not to call. In retrospect, her buddy didn't really get Eleni's situation. After all, she had kept her message brief and to the point. Unfortunately, neither of these situations were true, and the cause was significantly more sinister. And after her disastrous date, her radio silence lasted the entire night. She never came back to her apartment. Let's fast forward to the morning of the next day. It was Tuesday, November 28, 2018. Two fishermen were making their way along a cliffside on roads. They were heading out for the day's fishing. However, as the two were exploring potential locations, they saw something odd. As the two looked over the edge of the cliff, their interest immediately turned to fear as they saw what lay below. A human body. The situation was reported to the police, and cops arrived shortly thereafter. The fishermen expressed their shock to police that the body hadn't been carried away by the tide. This morning's tide was quite rough, and the water was extremely shallow. There was a chance that this body would never be located if it had floated away overnight. Tragically, the body was that of a young woman who had been battered so badly that she was unidentifiable. A single rose tattoo on the ankle was all the police could locate to use as a unique identifier. While waiting for forensic results, police started questioning everyone who worked at neighborhood tattoo shops. Eleni Topaludi's identity was regrettably confirmed as soon as their efforts bore fruit. The previous evening, she had been flung down the cliff. Eleni's loved ones were informed of the tragedy, and their shock and grief were predictable reactions. The circumstances of how she got into this situation were quickly investigated. Most of Eleni's injuries appeared to have occurred before she started her descent down the cliff. She was stabbed several times, struck across the head several times, and finally strangled to death. Her legs were bound together, and a sexual assault looked to be the apparent purpose. You can probably guess where this is going, but the police were able to zero in on the perpetrators after reviewing CCTV footage from outside Eleni's house. Manoli and Alexander were finally caught and put into custody once this came to light. It shouldn't come as a surprise, yet our rich, privileged brat pretended not to know anything. But Alexander, he gave in. He told the police that he and Manoli were responsible for the crime. According to Alexander's account given to authorities, the three of them had picked up their kebabs from a local restaurant and then gone to the Kukura summer home in Lindos, where they ate them while relaxing on the roof and drinking alcohol. However, not long after that, their genuine motives became apparent. There, the two males made sexual advances at Eleni and asked if they might sleep together. 
the proposal took Eleni by surprise. Both of them were still total strangers to her, even though she had been talking to one of them for a week. She declined the offer calmly, but when she said no, things quickly became dangerous. The two were determined to succeed. One man threatened Eleni with a knife as the other grabbed her roughly. Although she was outnumbered, she fought back. Then, Manoli and Alexander led her downstairs to a room that was disorganized and included two filthy mattresses. Eleni was assaulted and battered on the head while she was her. Despite her pain and fear, Eleni fought back bravely when she regained consciousness and threatened to call the police on her attackers. Manoli was unable to accept this. He came from a prominent family, and if she exposed his true horrible nature, it would bring shame to them all. The level of violence in his mind increased. Eleni could only be silenced if her ability to speak was taken away or if she simply vanished. They first attempted to strangle Eleni to death, but when that didn't work, they beat her mercilessly until she was unconscious. Eleni, however, was not willing to give up the fight and die. Then, they drove to a desolate cliffside and flung her off into the dark water below. After everything that Eleni had been through this evening, she was still alive after falling ten meters into the shallow ocean. She was totally aware the entire time, but she was paralyzed and unable to move, so she gradually drowned in the shallow water. After finishing off Eleni, the two men went back to the cottage for the summer. Manoli and Alexander were extremely dumb to try and hide their criminal activity. There was blood all over the house, for starters, so it was clear that none of them had ever cleaned before. In addition, they returned to the scene of the crime with all of her belongings and flung them off the cliff. Most of these objects were really captured by the bushes on the way down due to the slope, angle, and wind direction. They probably intended for these things, as well as, sadly, Eleni's body, to be swept out to sea. However, neither of them had thought to check the tide, and the entire rock face was now covered in evidence. Without a doubt, the strategy wasn't well thought out. Two fishermen would discover her body the following morning. Even after the summer house had been sealed off, checked and cleaned, the property still bore the gruesome images of the previous night. Eleni's blood was discovered on the stairs, in the kitchen, the hallway, and the bathroom. Our villains also experienced some unlucky turns of events. There was a lot of anti-foreigner sentiment on local news channels after their arrest, and as they villainized Alexander, many of them also painted Manoli as an unwitting participant. This, of course, was not the case, and as I'd mentioned before, Manoli had already had multiple brushes with the law, all of which had been resolved amicably thanks to his wealth and social standing. Some of these charges were later revealed to be based on sexual assault, which is even more disturbing. Once again, the Kukura family would dump a ton of cash into the case in the naive belief that Manoli would receive a lighter sentence as a result. Alexander and Manoli spent the entire court process placing blame for Eleni's death on the other. They'd all say they were just innocent bystanders when the assault, murder, and cover-up occurred. Why didn't they either contact the police or disarm the perpetrator if this was the case? The authorities didn't buy their lame explanations. The media and the court would now unfortunately frequently side with Manoli over Alexander. This is because of xenophobia, a widespread issue in Greece. Foreigners are sometimes given preferential treatment in Greek courts, and Manoli's defense team planned to use this to their advantage by portraying Alexander as a corrupting outsider who had ruined the life of a promising young man from a prominent family. This means Alexander's criminal history has been exposed. There were many sexual assault charges against Alexander, similar to those against Manoli. Unfortunately, sexism had an important role in this situation. The media stated that Eleni was a loose woman who asked for it, since she slept around openly because she was not in a serious relationship. She was portrayed negatively, and it was suggested that she was the one who initiated the trio. Manoli's legal team attempted to defame Eleni's reputation in the public as part of their strategy to prove their son's innocence. One thing I didn't mention before is that this wasn't the first time Eleni had been the victim of sexual assault. Just two years ago, she too fell prey. Despite turning to the police for help, 
Eleni was actually urged to drop the case and keep it to herself, since the perpetrator had videotaped the assault and was using it as blackmail to keep her quiet. Covering this case opened my eyes to the shocking reality that many allegations of sexual assault in Greece never go to trial because of the widespread disregard for women's safety. Believe it or not, Manoli's phony defense team also argued for an all-male jury on the grounds that women could not be relied upon to render a fair verdict. The Kakuras tried everything to get their son out of trouble. They made public appearances, pushed their version of events, and even had a doctor prescribe Manoli antidepressants so he would appear more fragile. Throughout their trial, Manoli and Alexander gave the camera teams the finger and smiled arrogantly, as if they knew they were doing something right. It took two years of court processes and debate, but in the end, both Alexander and Manoli were given life sentences without the possibility of parole for Eleni's murder. Topping off their minimum sentence of 25 years in prison was a 15-year term for sexual assault. These sentences don't seem long enough, given that both individuals have a history of legal trouble and that their crimes against Eleni were particularly horrific. However, videos sent from behind bars reveal that Alexander and Manoli are being victimized by other inmates while serving out their 25-year sentences. That data is yours to keep to do with as you please. The public and Eleni's family are still waiting for an apology from either of these individuals, but neither of them has shown any remorse for their acts. Since femicide is still not considered a crime in Greece, Eleni's family decided to start an anti-femicide campaign in her memory. Because Eleni's case was so shocking, I believe there is now more of a need than ever to end the practice of femicide. There is unfortunately no way to revive Eleni. She will never learn that people have come together to celebrate her memory or that her murder has been solved. She was a promising young woman with a bright future who was taken from us far too soon. A promising future cut short by two guys who clearly saw little worth in her. Her loved ones go to her cemetery on her birthday to pay their respects and pray for her eternal rest, something that they too will eventually learn to appreciate. Manoli, meanwhile, will be lucky if his mom and dad can still take care of him by the time he gets out of jail. And while we're at it, shouldn't it be a crime not to be able to read what's on your own t-shirt? As it turns out, this dummy didn't get the memo. Leave your opinions in the comments section as always, and stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Take care of yourself till I see you again in the next video, and I'll see you then. Take care of yourselves, and don't put yourself in harm's way. Kind regards, have a nice day.